Hello everyone, Pallytub here, and welcome back to the A through Z playthrough. In today's video, we've landed upon Junkrat. Junkrat has a 50.77% win rate, a popularity of 26%, almost 27%. <laughs> But 15% of that popularity's worth is just bans. Junkrat is banned more than he is played. That should be your first clue that we're looking at a pretty good character. Now, several months ago, even before the A through Z started, I was a pretty bad Junkrat. It was kind of in the same tier as my Kael'thas. It was, uh, what, 32% on Kael'thas for quite some time until I figured out the character and we got it right. Kael'thasad, very similar story. It took me a really long time to get used to this character, but now we got it. It's in the bag. Deerfeed, same thing. Started out really sketchy. Now we're looking pretty good. Deerfeed was like a 20% win rate, maybe. Well, my Junkrat was really really bad and then i saw bradley moonfair playing a game in hero league and absolutely running circles around the enemy team with all the mobility that this character had and that's when i decided it was time to learn this character however unlike diva i didn't make a big deal about it i kept this to myself i say this a lot in the, in the video you're about to watch but i am happy to say that my junk rat is looking pretty good these days 25 games isn't a lot to go off of but my win rate was in the dirt and all i was doing was losing and i slowly learned how to turn that around and finally be able to do something on this character and i have to say he is phenomenal there is a reason junkrat has banned in more games than he has played in and today i hope to show you just a small little snippet of what that can look like now i don't know a ton about junkrat so this is once again me calling on you guys to really fill in the blanks here i did not follow his development at all i do know that he was one of the first characters to have wall interaction with his frag launcher kind of the same with hanzo same technology being used there he had it before diablo had it he's able to bounce these grenades off walls and into enemies so even if you miss your abilities there's still a chance that it's gonna hit something yeah, looking pretty fair. Hey, I hope you guys enjoy this episode. Yes, the time at the bottom of the screen is correct. I'm very tired. I'm very loopy, but it was a pretty good game nonetheless. <laughs> As battle begins, type GLHF to communicate. Good luck. Have fun to your allies. Good luck. Have fun. All right, so I'm going to level with you. It's 5.30 in the morning. I can't sleep. Big surprise. We've been down this road before, but here we are on Junk Rant in quick match with a Butcher, Nova, Vala, and Ragnaros. Anything could happen in this game. Good game has already been called. The enemy team, Kalthazad, Cassia, Ragnaros, Raynor, and Asmodan. Level one, we're going to go for tricky shuffles. Gain movement speed when our Q ability has used all of its charges. What is our Q ability? It is the Frag Launcher. We fire projectiles that can also bounce off of walls towards enemy combatants. Hopefully, if they ever show up to the lane they're supposed to be in, everybody goes middle. What do you mean they were middle? Uh, our W ability allows us to throw a concussion mine that we can then use to interact with the environment in a number of ways. One of those ways is by throwing our character we throw the concussion mine down on the ground and then detonate that charge to zoom our character around. Um, I've been keeping this from you. I think Junkrat's the best character in the game. Uh, I think he fills every role that you need to as a damage dealer and then some. He's even got some icing on top. I have not been telling you guys that I've been practicing Junkrat, but I've been practicing Junkrat. And hopefully you'll be able to see that in today's video. I mean, he has everything I want. He has lane clear. He has traps you can throw down. He rides on a shark. Really, what's not to love? What's not to love? The only thing he's missing, and I mean the only thing, is a little bit of health regen. In most games, that's not a big deal because you have a healer right next to you. But in this game, it probably doesn't matter because everyone's going to be dying anyway. 
and it's going to be none of my concern. He also has a really good ability to take camps even early in the game with our cleaving auto attack. As you can see, we're damaging all of our enemies even while kiting one around. When our Q comes off cooldown, we just throw that in towards all of these guys and continue auto attacking. And look at that, it's a thing of beauty. We take the camp just fine without the help of anyone at all, as you can clearly see. That AoE damage is so... <laughs> addicting it's so good it's so satisfying i can't get enough of it unfortunately we're on a map where there's basically no camps at all so i don't get to show you that part of this game but literally i've been in pve heaven just jumping all over maps getting every single camp in the sun underneath the sun's light and just having the time of my life. It's really been super enjoyable. Not sure at all where the enemy team went. So let's make sure we have an escape plan ready to go. This is my escape plan. We're also going to use that to throw the enemy minions around a wee bit. Looks like the enemy team did rotate up to get that mercenary camp. The enemy team's Cassia likely going with them. I don't know why. How's Kalthazad doing? 8 out of 30 so far. Enemy team is missing quite a lot. So we're going to start to back up here. Looks like the friendly team has three members up in the top lane as the objective is coming online. You love to see that. Can we get somebody down here to maybe participate in this thing? This is our E ability. This is a steel trap. We throw this on the ground. It takes a moment to prepare, but if enemies walk in that, they're going to be rooted for quite some time. Hopefully this game, I just kind of combo that when the butcher goes in as he roots someone or as he stuns someone, we just root on top of it and make their life even worse. Like this Asmodan here. We just throw the trap right in front of him. Uh, looks like that timing's not really going to work out for me. Let's send Kalthus up. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. My bad. I'll apologize. <laughs> that was totally my fault. I was trying to send him back to our team, but I was off by just a couple pixels. That's really all it takes. It's a super precise science to get this shit right. As Ragnaros is moving up, we're just going to bop him away. Throw a trap right on Jimmy. That trap might actually work. Hold on. Hold on. I'll send something his way. Maybe we'll hit him. I have to dodge some of these Kalthazad chains. Our entire team is backing up here. I don't understand why. Here's a concussion mine. I'm sending myself away. Deep. Team, what happened? Why'd we all... Why'd we all... Why'd we all go? That's okay, though. That was looking fine. That was looking fine. Let's go ahead and get... Get a region globe here. We have our sippy cup just a few feet away. We'll grab that as well. At level 7, I really like to take big ass. It just gives you a big mine. Or a big trap. That's all. You just put this down and it takes up like a whole big section. The enemy team literally can't walk through here now. If they do, they're gonna be killed. And that's pretty much the end of it. There's no way they could survive my entire team attacking them while they're rooted. There's literally no way. Cassie walking up to me. We're just going to walk right back in. Friendly team wants to channel on this. Let's throw a trap right down in the middle there. That one not as convincing. I do think the enemy team will be able to walk over that one, especially now that Cassie is getting a little close to me. We're going to start to disengage. Satchel charging ourselves away. There we go. The friendly team finally noticing someone's overextending. We're going to get some damage in on the tail end and take down Cassia with some of our frag grenades as she's running away. Unfortunately, my health getting pretty low. But, you know, before we leave, let's push out a lane really fast, grab this regen globe, and then back up before someone rotates in on me. We don't have any mana. We The only thing we have to manage is the four charges that we have of our frag launchers. So if I'm on the field and I can do something, I, I might as well. Don't you fucking die. I would have been so mad. Dude, I know it's 530 in the morning. I know no one's playing at their best here, including myself. <laughs> but that would have sent me over the edge. I could have taken that. Uh, friendly team not going to be able to really do anything for me here, unfortunately. Ragnaros really committing to dive under the tower. And the Butcher punishing him for that. We punish back. He tried to send that ball after me as well. But, of course, that ball's not going to hit me, dude. I'm totally safe. The mini wave's starting to pile up here again. We're just going to go in with some auto attacks. And look at this beautiful clear. Look at it. It's just gorgeous. 
The friendly team does move in for the objective yet again. We have finally hit level 10, and I think I'm going to go for the Rip Tire in today's game. The other choice is fine, too. Rip Tire does some better AoE damage, allows us to just kind of burst down an enemy team. Basically, if we see the Butcher charging, we can send the Rip Tire in for some pretty meaningful damage without having to move ourselves up on the battlefield very much at all let's go ahead and hit this tower pretty hard we've been tickling it all game but now's the time where it goes down uh all of middle lane is missing so we're gonna start backing up a little bit we don't know where they are enemy team ragnaros starting to move towards us now asmodan reinforcing we can poke these guys a little bit with our q but we're not going to be able to do too much. Lucky for us, the friendly team does pick up a kill on Jim Rainer somewhere. Didn't see who got it. Hopefully it was the Butcher. We're seeing some Kel'Thuzad chains enter the field. We're just going to back away as that is happening. Satchel charge the enemy team's Ragnaros back to save our friendly team's Ragnaros and continue holding the bottom lane. That sippy cup going to bring me back up to full health. Nice and easy. Uh, and I think they left. So I'm just gonna stay here. I'll just keep auto attacking. It's all the same to me, my dudes. All the same to me. This is what I'm here for. This is what I signed up for. Uh, we do have several members of the enemy team missing though. Let me put this here. So hopefully they don't flake me from down on that angle. I don't really think anyone's gonna do that. I don't think that's a super big fear for me at the moment, but that's a pretty bad satchel. We're not gonna be separating Asmodan from ourselves that way. Uh, Ragnaros is just kind of hanging out with me here. Looks like the Butcher's being chased by Cassia. Does get taken down up in the top lane. I feel like I'm... You know what, you guys? You, you figure out what you're doing together. I feel like I was really sticking around too long. I feel like I was the third wheel in that lane for quite some time. Oh, uh, no. One of the wheels is following me up here. Unfortunately, the friendly team wiped out in a lot of different directions. Top lane not looking so good. Jimmy might be backing up. Might be rotating down to me. I think he's just backing up. There's no way in hell these guys are on boss, but I'm going to check it anyway because it's quick match in the early morning and you never really know. Lots of friendly pings going down for our mercenary camp over on the left side of the map as these guys are filtering in. Let's just throw some stuff in the lane and see what happens. Cassia almost walking all over that trap. She actually does on the tail end there. These guys pushing up pretty far on me. Butcher rotating up as well, so we just have to keep their attention for a little bit. Now that the Butcher is in range... I really gotta stop doing that. I'm just making it worse. I'm just fucking making it worse. I shouldn't do that. Uh, we do follow up with the old just fine though, even though I threw the satchel charge around and totally ruined his entire fucking play. Do you know what? We still, we still had some fun. Now this is when things start to get ridiculous for Jump Rat. He has this talent here at level 13. Look at the cooldown of my W ability. If I only impact myself with this, it basically has no cooldown. I mean, two seconds, which is just long enough for you to figure out where you are and then sit down another mine. This is so insanely strong. It allows Junkrat to literally be everywhere on the map all of the time, just doing siege damage, completely clear clearing lanes with his not only his auto attacks, but with his Q. It's literally just insane the amount of mobility this single talent gives our character, and I cannot recommend it enough. And you can just do so much ridiculous shit. Like, you can swoop in, snipe an objective from an enemy team, and then swoop out before they even notice in some cases. Of course, that's not going to be how this goes today. The enemy team is rotating in for me right now. Let me jump back towards middle, back towards my team. We have Sippy Cup if we need it. Junkrat is incredibly good at delaying objectives, too. So even if we have to play defensive here, I can just poke over this wall so long with the frag launcher. That it's not even funny. Like, we, we could delay for days. Jim Laner moving in for the friendly team. The Butcher sees him, and he is engaged. We're doing some good damage over the wall, and we're going to keep some pretty passive positioning here. I don't want Ragnaros to really see me. Uh, we're going to start to hop away here as he is starting to get in range. Uh, we can sippy cup and head back in. We also have our ult still off cooldown as well if we need to use it, and I think we do. But without the Butcher, where's everyone gonna get their bravery from? Well, I'm just gonna send this in. 
if he's attacking this Ragnaros, we're going to help. There's the triple tap following up the rip tire, and that's going to be a kill on Asmodan. Let's really aggressively head into this back line now, focusing on Kel'Thuzad with the auto attacks and the Qs. We land it, and then let's just put that in the way of Ragnaros. Maybe we can have a little bit of fun with it. Our trap completely cuts off that entrance from the enemy team, and at level 16, we're going to pick up Spread Volley. I think this might be my favorite talent in the game. Wait, what happened to my trap? You guys fucking walked on it and I didn't notice? Get away from me. Uh, spread Volley allows you to just... If you've never seen it before, you're in a treat. You're in for a treat. It just lets you do that. It just lets you send out all kinds of stupid shit towards your enemies. It's three projectiles per launch of your Q, so you're shooting out... What, 12 projectiles? Did I math right? It's really early. I am I may not have math, math right. Uh, it's on a 30 second cooldown. So you can't use it all the time. But imagine we're on a map that it actually has mercenary camps and you just shoot this many explosions into a mercenary camp. It's literally just gonna die right away. There's, there's not much of a hesitation there. But you're feeling brave going for the boss down to the bottom lane since the enemy team pushed us off of the objective. Well, hey, this will be a great opportunity to show you the spread volley. All I have to do is actually get close to the enemy and you can see just the amount of damage that this can dish out. That chunk was me. I think that's nuts. That's a ton of damage. The enemy team not reacting to the fact that four members of the friendly team have been in the bottom lane this whole time, still continuing to push middle. Hey, they did grab a little mercenary camp of their own, didn't they? We're so very proud of you. Well, this boss is going to get that building for free. Ragnaros is opting to stay with it, so it seems. We're going to just attack this for a moment until our spread volley is available. And then completely kill it. This is my favorite talent in the whole game. Look at that shit. It's so satisfying. This is the best fucking thing I've ever seen, and I could do it all day. God, I've really been sitting on this junk rat shit for you guys. I really wanted this episode to be exciting. All right, let's go ahead and hop over this wall. Blow up on our two comp compadres as they are trying to escape. That hop didn't do me any favors. Perhaps this one. Well, we're pretty close to Ragnaros. Unfortunately, we're pretty close to Jim Rayner too, and he deals a lot of damage. But don't you worry, Kel'Thuzad's not going to hit me with that shit. And her friendly Ragnaros almost finishes him off. Look at that. You love to see it. My mercenary camp is pushing pretty okay. I do kind of want to uh, clear this out, but I'm not feeling super confident. Health is pretty low. That's literally our one and only drawback is we have a low HP pool, but here's the channel. Uh, they interrupted it. Here's another chip. Ah! What the fuck? What the fuck, man? You did what? That's okay, though. The, the Butcher is going to go in for the channel. Looks like the friendly team's going to secure this one. No problem. The friendly mercenary is still pushing middle lane, getting a lot of value, reducing the armor that these buildings have. And, oh, we are 1.2 seconds off from the full channel. The enemy team able to re-engage here. It looks like Kelth is on scaring away Aragnos. The triple tap happening on Jim Laner and Vala committing to that engagement as well. Kelth is on missing with his ult. Ragnaros moving forward, but with no mana, what's he going to do? One E isn't going to be enough, but, but, but a quick snipe from our Nova. Well, in that engagement, no problem. I can't remember a single word I've said this game. I hope it's all coming out nice and clear. I hope you guys are following the story. Level 20 is uh, going to be creeping up on us pretty fast. And then at level 20, we're going to take Cannonball. Increases the radius and explosion radius of grenades and basic attacks from our frag launcher. So, like, we just kill everything. Like, just all the time. Even if we just auto attack, it just cleaves everything. It's the most satisfying thing I've ever seen. Just walk up to a minion wade and attack the mage twice and it's dead and it kills everything else along with it. It's so good, dude. It's so good. I fucking love it. Cassia kind of rotating towards me a little bit. Let's put this in the middle of the lane and see if we can do anything with it. We do have the spread volley almost available. I'm going to use it now as she's trying to run away. She's protected for a second, but there's the damage. That bouncing lightning is actually hitting me pretty hard. Nova's going to be able to finish that off. 
No problem, though, as we also pick up a kill on Kel'Thuzad in the middle lane. That building already dead. We need to make sure that we don't get dunked by Asmodan. Need to make sure that I can reposition away from that. Speaking of Asmodan, he is kind of moving up on my team right now. Oh, let me just clear this wave so fast. It's like it didn't even exist. Oh, and while I'm at it, why don't I rotate up to top lane, turn on this spread volley again, and just completely annihilate this building like it never existed. Existed. Okay, maybe a little bit of an exaggeration on that last one. But I'm gonna kill this building before this fucking game's over. This is my building. This is mine. I worked hard for this. Ugh. Yes. All right, I hope I've painted a good enough picture for you as to why Junkrat is the best character in the game. I've been sitting on this for months, and now it's out there. He clears lanes. He deals damage. He just he does everything. He does everything I've ever wanted. And we somehow snag the MVP, even though I don't remember any of this game. Sometimes, smile. Uh, how do we do? What are our stats? 108,000 siege damage, 25,000 hero damage. Highest XP contribution in the game with 14,000. Not bad at all. Hey, Vala. I hope you enjoy being in this video if you see it. Appreciate you, dude. It's always nice when people are nice, man. So yeah, this is kind of the build I run all the time. That's why a few videos ago, a Junkrat was hitting me with Rip Tire over and over and over. I don't know if anyone really remembers that, but I was like, how is he doing that? And it was just a level 20 talent that I never take because I always do this build. It's perfect. There's no reason to change anything. Tricky Shuffles at level 1, Into Taste, 4 Explosions at level 4, Big Ass at level 7, Rip Tire at level 10, Ripper Air at 13, that talent is so damn fun. Man, I've seen Bradley do some insane things with this talent in particular, he's such a good junk rat. I'm just starting to unlock the potential. I had a super duper low win rate with him, and it's getting a lot better. Spread Volley is the most satisfying talent in the game, and I'll never consider anything else, and Cannonball just makes it even better. That's going to do it for today's episode. Junkrat A through Z is done. Thank you for being here. Up next, Salami is Shalindore. We'll see you again next time. <laughs>